I'm sure you guys didn't invite me here to discuss my favorite color. So there must be a big game or something this week. Appreciate the opportunity uh, to chat with you again. So we'll get right into it. Colin Taylor on the uh, front right, the first one. For starters, what is your favorite color? Oh, blue, for blue. sure. Okay. For sure, <laughs> yes. And what's your, been in You your... know that's from A Few Good Men, right? Yeah. Okay, no, all right, all right. I, I just yeah. wanted to make sure I'm not dating myself too no. badly. We talked about my age in here two weeks ago, so I just but want to make sure I, I, I haven't passed to... everybody up. Well, I wanted to at least get that on the record, just, you, I like just it. for posterity's sake. What, <laughs> through the first two weeks, what's been your impression of the special teams unit and how you guys have played so far? Well, I'm certainly glad that we've been able to make a meaningful contribution to two wins. That's our goal, and between the block punts and the explosive kickoff return last week and the, the muddle huddle and some other little things that we've been able to do, there's a good feeling about um, accomplishing something significant. Uh, but when you go back and, and you watch the film and you watch technique and you watch understanding and you watch consistency, um, it's humbling to know we have a long, long, long way to go, and every day – as I've talked to you about in here before, just has to be a little baby step forward where you hope the light switch is going on for a couple more guys and guys are continuing to develop. And some of the guys that you're seeing out there in the first two games may not be the same guys covering kickoffs for us in week eight and week nine. So we need to keep bringing guys along. And um, you know, my job every day is to, to try to coach every single guy on the roster in some way, shape or form. Pete, uh, you mentioned, I believe it was last week, the importance of a good holder. So could you talk about Kai yes. uh, holding the, the high snap that he pulled down on Parker's first field goal? Yeah, he certainly did. He's, uh, he's a smooth operator. Um, he, is, he is cool under pressure. Um, he's got really, really good ball skills, but that's something you, you have to continue to work. And one of the things we like to do with our punter slash holder is make sure that downtime during practice – that he's almost doing receiver type drills to just make sure he's catching as many balls as possible for situations just like what you saw. Um, as a punter, as a holder, not, not every snap is gonna be within a comfortable radius for you. So whether they're high, whether they're low, off to the side, um, you've gotta make sure that, that you can adjust and, and, and still get the ball down. And that was obviously as important as anything else that happened in that game because we missed that field goal. We're not too ha happy uh, afterwards. John Little, back right. A uh, couple of things on, on kickoff return. Did, did you think going into that ECU game, y'all might have a, a chance to break one? It seemed like even before Juju's, there were a couple that, that were real close. And and how much is that, it, or, or your return blocking, Is how much is that tweet uh, before a game? Is Do you... Do you uh, basically scrap what you did the, the day before? Or do, you, do you just make little minor adjustments here and there based on what opponent does? Yeah, great, great questions. Uh, that that field return has been very, very good to me through the years. You know, we all, we all have that favorite shirt or pair of pants or a pair of socks. You know that we we like to wear. Uh, that that was that return for for me against ECU. You can go back and watch Ball State film or, or any of the, uh, the other places that, uh, that I've been. And that's, that's been, uh, been good for us from time to time. So it was nice to see it happen. Um, the second part of your question, the, the concepts are very consistent. Uh, I, I don't like to walk in there on a Tuesday or Wednesday and present the guys with something that looks like reinventing the wheel. So the concepts are going to stay consistent from spring practice through the summer, through every game week. And then it's, it's just tweaking things just enough that uh, hopefully you can have the, the best matchups, the right people in position, uh, but always talking the same language, always using the same techniques. And uh, again, that's still very much a work in progress. But when you have explosive plays like that, it's nice to be able to go in there on Sunday and show the team and feel like, okay, guys, what we're talking about every day, not just this week against East Carolina, if, if we stick to the plan and we believe in what we're doing and we continue to not get bored with, with these fundamentals, you know, we, we can do good things. Let's stay away in the back with Bill Hey, Coach, you talk about contributions by your groups so far. Do you think that you've developed enough of uh, – um, 
reputation now at South Carolina where your next opponent is spending an inordinate amount of time being concerned with South Carolina's special teams. And in some way, you know, that's a plus for you guys because they're having to spend more time being concerned about what you do. Well, I, there's only one group that can, can answer that, and that's not me. But uh, I, I hope that we at some point do develop that reputation. I don't know that two weeks uh, against, um, you know, two, two solid opponents, but two games we're very happy to win. I, I don't know if that, that's enough of a, of a reputation here. I, I would guess as thorough as the group we're playing this week is, they've probably looked back at a bunch of stuff from – Memphis and Rice and even back to Maryland and maybe even back to Ball State. Um, I know I watched a lot of Georgia film this summer um, while we had some downtime. So uh, I, I hope that, uh, that we're building a, a reputation and a, and a healthy respect. But uh, I, I don't ever think we've arrived. And, and obviously the, the challenges uh, around here are about to grow exponentially. Pete, we've talked a lot about Parker White just through the years, but you know, with him and, and being a senior and a guy who's been there before, just how valuable is that in moments, you know, down the stretch, tying a, a tying field goal, a game-winning field goal, and just, you know, a, as a coach, I mean, do you kind of just let him do his thing and, and leave him alone? I mean, what's the process in terms of coaching a guy like that when he's sort of got a routine or whatever it is? Well, you do need to coach every single guy differently, and they are truly all different, right? Their personalities and what makes them tick and pushing a little harder or easing off a little bit more. But what you love as a coach is the guys that are the same guy every day. When you know who's going to walk through the door, how he's going to carry himself, um, and, and just building that trust and, and certainly have that uh, with Parker and, and um, you know, just pleased that he acted like he had been there before. And that's something that even for a specialist, other guys can learn from. Just act like you've been there before. If you're on the kickoff return team this week and you've played in the first two games, let's not go out there on Saturday night in Athens and look like you haven't, right? Build off the, the reps that you've gotten in practice and the reps that you've gotten in games. And not everybody's as far along as Parker is, obviously. Um, but uh, very enjoy very much working with him every day and, and pleased that he was able to produce the way he did. Two questions. First, I think Alex Ferreira was y'all's kickoff specialist. He was East Carolina. What was the decision making for that, and how do you feel like he did? He did. He did quite well. Um, so one of the core values of our program, and, and you know, Shane and I are different people, but we we believe in the same things. That's been one of the things I've enjoyed so much about working here. When he talks to the team, I, I often chuckle because I. I hear myself years ago talking to my teams about the same values and the same priorities. And so it feels good to work in an organization where, where your priorities are the same. And one of the things we talk about all the time is competition. And what is it to just talk about it if you're not going to live up to it? And going into um, this last game, uh, I told our kickers that uh, like every week, we were going to chart everything they did. And you know, we had uh, a certain plan of attack for that game, and, and we were going to play the best people for that to, to give us a chance to beat East Carolina. And uh, at the end of the week, um, you know, I told Alex that he was going to be our kickoff guy, and he was thrilled to get the opportunity. And uh, the rest of the room handled it very well. We've got a tight-knit group in that room. They support each other. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun to, to work with those guys every day, and it was really great to see Alex go out there and – place those kickoffs where they needed to be to, to give East Carolina problems. And I guess on punt return, I've seen a couple of times Josh has either fair caught it or let the ball bounce and kind of roll. What Number one, what do you kind of teach there in terms of when to fair catch and when to not, and how do you feel like Josh has handled those specific instances? Sure. He's very dependable back there. Uh, possession is the number one priority for a punt returner. So you, you want confidence, you want aggressiveness back there, but – but not to a point where you're getting overzealous and could potentially cost your team a possession. So you saw a couple in, in East Carolina had a very good punter, as we will face another very good punter this week, and there were a couple punts that were targeted away from where Josh was that he had to go sideways to try to get to and got to a point where 
He just didn't feel like he could get his body underneath and catch it uh, in the type of, of uh, position that you teach punt returners to catch the ball in. So uh, I think he made some wise decisions. And of course, we'd love to get the return game going, but uh, not at the expense of getting the ball back to the offense. You sort of alluded to it earlier, but as far as Georgia and, and what they can bring to the table with talent on special teams, how different is that going to be for you guys as far as you know making that type of an adjustment? Yeah, they're, they're impressive to watch, and it starts at the top. And uh, it, to, to me, it seems like uh, every year they may have some different assistant coaches and who's the coordinator and who's involved and who's coaching certain units, but – they're always extremely well coached. They're always very thorough, detailed, uh, present you with a lot of problems in terms of, of multiplicity, and then their, their talent level across the board. Their specialists are, are top notch. Um, I had the, the extreme pleasure of coaching Jack Fox, who's the punter for the Lions, kickoff guy for the Lions, holder for the Lions. Well, our, our guy Jake down there, I mean, he, he reminds me an awful lot of Jack Fox. And, and I would not be surprised if, if he's not uh, playing at the same level as, as Jack Fox a, a year from now. And there's a host of other guys, other specialists and, and other returners down there that are equally as talented and dangerous. So, um, you know, everybody likes to be the special teams coordinator some days, but, but often not in weeks like this. Pete, you mentioned how much uh, Parker handles his business. What did you think of his bow at midfield after the game winner? His uh, oh, um, you know, I, I'll be honest with you. I tried not to talk to him a whole lot before the kick, and then after the kick, or, or with our celebrations and whatnot, um, I was looking for him, and I honestly did not find him until we got back into the locker room. Uh, so, and that's okay. You know, he hears from me enough during the week. Let him. Uh, enjoy the accolades and, and uh, the pats on the back from, from everybody else. I did find them uh, b before we both showered and, and got out of Greenville. Anything else for Coach? Appreciate it. All right. Sorry about my voice. Oh, I'm sorry. We got one more? Oh, no, I'm Oh, okay. You guys are the best. All right. <laughs> See you next week. Thank you.